But out here, it's big. What do you think I want to knock it over? Because it looks a little wider up here than it is down there. Or maybe it's an optical delusion. Our eyes can't deceive us. Sure. Well, you get optical delusions after you have an optical contusion. And then it can get kind of, and then it can get kind of. Good afternoon. Where you been? Hey. I was sitting there watching TV and time got away from me. He's partying, man. He's just he's bopping along, doing what you're doing. Yep. I'm always doing something, even if it's wrong. Yeah. Might as well. Can't get in trouble. Too wet to well plow. <laughs> Saturday night, as I was just kind of meditating on God, I was thinking about Simon carrying the cross for Jesus and thinking about how there are people that would have heard Jesus say, you have to pick up your cross and follow me, and now Jesus can't carry his cross. He's too weak. Chew on that for a little bit. And of course, not only physician heal yourself, Pick up your own dark cost to carry it weekly, daily. Yeah. And Jesus couldn't do it. Not his body. And if he flipped on the spirit, <laughs> it would have messed up everything. <laughs> it wasn't time for that. <laughs> it would have messed that would have been. He had a hard time waking up this morning. He'll do that. But you can beat it in some submission. It's not too bad. It just takes a little time. See, that's why it's a man and his time. It's where you focus your time. Sometimes you got to focus on rest. Like David, you know, he just sits there, and he's watching the world going by and seeing what God's doing and going, oh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> what you're saying is, is that God had the place. God had you prepared for it. God did the work, and you were just like and all being you, used by Him. All I did, all I did was watch. I mean, I feel like <laughs> I got a feeling you did a little more than that, but yeah. But I mean, <laughs> God just in two years, God just did did that thing, and that was that was when we left. That which is all you know, foreign companies spying on us. It's all cool. I want them to know about God, so I don't mind. <laughs> Uh, Sir, it's an honor and a privilege. It's an honor and a privilege for him to know you. Yeah, he's got the answers today. He's a... Exactly. Because I'm privileged to know you. So. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a... This is going to get scary. <laughs> this is going to get scary. That's, that's the splash zone down there. We don't want to ask them up there. Don't ever ask them for a pin. But no. We will get in trouble. Really? <laughs> he was there that day. I want to put you. Are you kidding me? You don't have pins? Uh, it's a big ordeal. It was just funny how bring extra pens all the time and always give them pens. Get yeah. them from churches and stuff. Yeah, and then just give them a pen. All oh, time. it's hilarious. She's fired up. Over They'll love it. One yeah. pens. It'll be a great gig. And I love the pens. Where are we at? Man in this time. Uh, uh, my web page works now, so you can go to dennisemerson.com, and then that's that's the web page. I think I got turned to pop up on the. I think I have a pop-up that says, Hi, Mike. How's it going? Oh, is that the, the actor? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we got to wait for him. Shoot, I do everything shortly. <laughs> I'm, even, I'm even short-handed. <laughs> He's got to make his appearance. <laughs> I respect that. My kids are all going to call me shorty. Yeah. My grand, my great-grandson will only be shorter than me till he's three. <laughs> I knew a preacher Thanks, that he was a giant, but his, <laughs> his one hand <laughs> was big as my respect. two hands. Yeah. And he he eat uh, six dozen eggs a, a day. Every morning he ate six dozen eggs. But he was nine foot something tall. <laughs> I'd probably eat that many eggs too. I'll <laughs> tell you what, when he preached, everybody listened. Yeah. <laughs> he had a big, loud voice, yeah. you know. Not a problem. <laughs> And my, uh, Whatever he has to say, I'm going to listen. <laughs> my uh, my oldest son is 55 now, but he was uh, he was just a little guy, and I, the giant held out his hands, and he just went. He never seen so buddy so big. <laughs> his eyes about popped out of his head. Well, I don't bump my head on anything. 
There's some advantages. Yes, there is. Without further ado, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I uh, uh, enter the building. You're Sir so William. Uh, has she knighted you yet? I don't not remember. Not yet. yet. Not, not yet. yet. She, although it was close. Jeff, what's your last name? Yeah. Uh, you don't want to know. No. It's long and messed up. Oh, you got to get to know her. Him. She charged me. She double. is nice, though. Oh, I, she charged double, that's why. <laughs> I don't know if I like her anymore. <laughs> Man, we're $20 eventually, for one cup hey, of coffee. Eventually, she'll double, get double, to the point where she charged me. I'm Settle, planning on skipping. <laughs> so I'm serious. I'm glad you didn't skip. And my alarm went skip. off, oh, and I was wide awake. One, but I still got up. Uh, and I did. True. That's why I get in the shower and I no. stand in there and fall asleep against the wall. <laughs> I was in there for about 45 minutes. Oh, holy moly! If well, I'm not sleeping. Pose, but. I could just stick it. David, you're really quiet today. Did you not wake up yet? You missed the show. He was, yeah, I was, like singing like a bird I was slow getting up. He was slow going. I was sitting there. No, just a uh, super good guy. A Christian guy. I was watching yep. TV and I was like, yep. oh man, I got to go. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you. Well, I wouldn't watch TV. But. Well, I guess we'll get started, fellas. It's good to see you guys this morning. We're going to be talking about time this morning. Man, in this time, old Dennis is up today. He's excited. I can tell you that grin. Adam's up next week, so get ready. Adam's going to. Adam, I am excited, buddy. Great, at least it's not about purity. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've been praying for him. Uh, I'm excited to hear some of his examples and things he's got on his mind. So that's gonna be good. So let's uh, let's pray this in, and then we'll, we'll get started. All right, God, we just thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. And we just thank you for a new day, new opportunities. Uh, just your, your grace that's new today and your mercy that's new today, Lord. We just thank you for it, Lord. Just thank you for the men at this table, Lord, that are striving for righteousness, striving to get close to you, Lord. So we thank you for your word, the sufficiency of it, Lord. And we thank you for the promises you give us, Lord, every single day, Lord. To help, help us to latch onto those, Lord, and apply on them. And, Lord, we'll just learn to trust you more. So strengthen our faith this morning, Lord. Give Dennis wisdom. And we just love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You recording this? Yeah, it's right there. No. Oh. Okay. I figure I'm louder. It's on the wrong end. No, because I'm louder than everybody else, and I can hear me really good on the recording. <laughs> so I figure if I put it at the other end, for some of the people are. I was going to ask what that was. Craig, I don't know. He's got a really cool voice, but he does kind of keep it a little, a little bit lower. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds Be careful really what good. you say. He's, uh, you're, on, you're on recording. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I figure yeah. the most important is David, though, so. <laughs> as long as I'm captured him. His podcast is doing pretty good, actually. You want to put it together from the lesson he wants? But yeah, time is what we're doing now. So, so as an actor, William. Sir. Um, think about time. What do you think about as it applies to acting, um, performing a part, accomplishing a mission? Well, time... Timing is, is, is obviously critical when you're interacting with other people. Especially for comedy. Uh, right, right. Yeah, it would be hard to get a punchline in 14 seconds late. You know, yep. Not roll off quite as well. Yeah, that's when you, that's when you go to slapstick comedy, because you already missed your opportunity to time <laughs> out. What you're saying. So, so you want to make sure you make your cues, because that'll, uh, that'll throw everyone else off. So your timing um, is is imperative to the whole, to the whole d- uh, design of the show. And it's fun, though. When everybody's hitting their cues and yeah, and know what they're supposed to do, it's yeah, you, it feels good to be part of that team where. So yeah, there's words on the pages here too. I don't, I didn't bring my book in. I don't yeah. like it. Nothing yet. I left it out in the car. Well, the truck. I'm still blank. So. Yeah, I'm still blank too. Oh good. You get, you get. So. Oh, well, I got all the answers. Yeah, so I. The long and short of it is um, going to be, it's not what needs your time. But who needs it? I figured just in case, because there's a lot of notes, just in case I don't make it to the end, I'll start at the end. And start so, backwards? Yeah, well, just real just quick. Said. Then I'll go back to the beginning. Okay. You know, it's sort of like the beginning is the end, and the end is the beginning, the alpha and omega. I don't know. Uh, it's confusing. Omega, the alpha, the rest is last. They're all wrong. <laughs> We're going together. <laughs> but it, it asks this question about, you know, who needs your time? And then um, 
I, it had a, a spot to write like four people who need your time, and I said, Mike, I do not have enough time for Mike. That was what I put for number one. And then number two, what? I said, I need help with Mike. And then number three, You're such a troublemaker. I guess I put, I cannot let Mike use all my time. And then number four, I put. Don't even get me started on David, because I figured that would just go forever and ever and ever. <laughs> it's a great point. point. <laughs> so I put another quarter in him, I mean, he's going to keep going. So the first one is, um, for our generation, one of the saddest realities in regard to God's call upon men is the number of times we men have surrendered that call upon our lives to the opposite sex. And this is what the beginning of time really. But in the history of man that was always the issue. That's why um, the prophet, false prophet or whatever, prophet that wasn't really jiving with God that good <laughs> told them, hey, just get him to marry these other women from these other tribes. Because what happens the woman's God becomes the God of the house because the woman's at the house. Um, especially when the man is out tending in the field, taking care of the cattle, whatever. There's a lot of that to do. The house is hers, man. So whatever God she's got there, that's the God of the house. Um, and so oftentimes, I think that's the point they're making here, number one. The saddest thing is that men will surrender um, that to the opposite sex. In other words, they'll follow their wife's God instead of following the true God. And that helps a lot. <laughs> if you're both seeking the same God, even though you may come from different cultures and backgrounds and have different um, issues, um, you know, obviously going to have gender issues, no matter who you choose for a partner. Um, so... But I think that's the one where it's the saddest sermon to that. I don't know if anybody have any other thought on that one? No, I think that's a good point. Like, God designed us as men to be to lead our homes, not for the woman. But it, I mean, it's we've got to make them feel as if it's a safe place. Oh, yeah. You know, not their place, not my place, but God's place. Yeah. You know, there's a difference. But it needs to be safe for them and their children. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Whatever they love. Yeah. Pursuit of happiness. They should put that in like a constitution or something somewhere and live by it. Pretty, Pretty sure they have it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it's a, a. Sometimes it's a battle because our spirituality is sometimes based on our relationship with our wife. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't yeah. know how to explain it, what I'm trying to get out, but sometimes I found myself shaky. Seems like when our marriage is shaky, is all mm. of a sudden your spirituality is shaky. Your, sure. your your love for God, your love for your wife, separating those and, and keeping them in the right place is is difficult sometimes, it feels like. Because in, in, as men in our ministry, our, our wives are it's God, our wives, right? Children, ministry, they're our number one, our number one ministry, our number one responsibility. They are, we are, they are to us as we are to Christ, you know? And so it's, man, I, sometimes I struggle with that. I think it's really difficult whenever I have a hard time with her because I'm like, man, <laughs> Just to be honest, it's like sometimes I feel like some of my hardest struggles, for, I feel like, are from the one that I'm joined to, and we're both indwelt with the Spirit. It's, it's a trip up sometimes. It's like, man, what is going on? It's difficult. It's struggle. Then, oh, yeah. you know, just being, being real. Yeah. So trying to, I think it's really important for us as men to separate, separate that to a degree and always maintain that strength and love for God. Because that's whenever it teaches us how to be sacrificial and humble towards her, you know. Absolutely. Man, it's so hard. It's really, really difficult sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's easy. Well, I mean, in, in the passage, it's talking about Ezekiel 22, you know. And if, if you read it, it says, So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me and before or behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my... In indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have 
recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. So, you couldn't even find anyone to stand in the gap. You know what I'm saying? And this is stand in the gap for his family. You know, stand in the gap for your brothers. You know, there's nothing greater than having a brotherhood. I mean, there's nothing greater than having men that will stand next to you and fight alongside you. What can break the brotherhood? Yeah, that's good. Good question. Pride. And pride will be the downfall. I mean, you stray pretty fast. Pride. <laughs> sin. Sin just in general. Sin, yeah. Sin in the camp. I mean, yeah. Sin in its right place. I mean, we're all sinful, right? And we still can have brotherhood. Oh, yeah. And, and pray for our brother who is a sinful man or, you know, they pray for me as a sinful man as well. Right. So sin in itself isn't necessarily going to destroy the brotherhood. There's but lines. how we allow that sin to exactly uh, proliferate amongst us, if we're not if we're not bringing it to the table and we're trying to hide it, yes, it could. Yeah, it could that unrepentant stuff is what yeah is the deal breaker. Well, Joshua, making a mistake. I mean, yeah. Joshua, what a great example. I mean, Israel was winning all the battles, and guys like go. And then was it Achan? No, not Achan. It was what's the one? Yeah, Achan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Took the, hid, hid the silver, yeah. hid the gold. God said, "Don't take anything. Keep it for yourself." Yeah. Yeah. Nobody will know. <laughs> I think, I think to you, to you, we're both saying the same thing. It's, you know, if somebody sins against me, do I take the prideful stance and in, in turn sinning back, or am I humble as Christ's example? Am I forgiving seventy-seven times? You know what I mean? So, so we all each have the opportunity to. to Push that aside to strive for that higher, to, to strive for the example of Christ in, in that. But if if it's compounding like what we're talking about, yeah. sin on top of sin, it can break. Well, when was the last time you know you were like maybe even at church and you're kind of avoiding somebody? You're like looking at Jeff like, oh gosh, I got to talk to him again. Why? <laughs> maybe you sinned against him. You know what I mean? And you don't you don't do the biblical model. You don't go to him and say, hey man, I think I sinned against you, or let's make this right. I'm sorry, you know, or whatever. And so there's friction. There's friction there because of the indwelling. What's inside my heart is sinful, you know, and it's sinful continuously. And so the only good in me is Jesus. That's right. You know, so waking up with the attitude. I think the solution to that is waking up with the attitude that I'm going to be the problem today. I'm going to be the problem today in, this, in every relationship. So then, now what do you do? You get right with God. Pick up. Earlier you said pick up your cross. Pick up your cross in the morning. Pick it up every day. Stay in the Word. His word is very solid and secure. Speaking of pride, I remember one time I was talking to a gentleman that I was fellowshipping with him. He was the pastor of the church. It was a big church. At one point, it was the fastest growing, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I was telling him, I could see he just wasn't quite going in the right direction. Well, you know, he's still a minister, and so I was telling him, I said, like, here in the church, I mean, I respect your position and everything. You're the pastor. You're the pastor here. Follow all your rules, whatever you have in this place. I said, but when we go outside, you know, I'm a minister too, and, you know, we're just, we're brothers out there. He's like, no, I'm your pastor out there too. And it's like, I can feel this pride between us. And it, it's like, it wasn't him, it wasn't me, but there was like this just big pillar of pride right there. And I'm like, what a trick, man. What is this deal? Pride? For what? Because <laughs> we're called? Because we're anointed? Just what? <laughs> How do you get proud about that? I mean, he died for us. You know, it's just, well, it's wild. <clears throat> I had one of my preachers call me the other morning uh, about 3 o'clock. It's different his time. <laughs> but we talked for two hours and 20 minutes. But I think he's almost ready right now. <laughs> I, led, I led his wife to the Lord, most of his kids to the Lord, and he was a Pentecostal till I got him straightened out. <clears throat> Dad, but the thing is, when we was in church and I was preaching, I was the pastor. Out of church, we were just friends. Yeah. We did visitation together. We... Uh, witness to people together. We did all kinds of things together outside the church. We were just friends. Yeah. Right inside the church, when I was preaching, then I was his pastor. It's a different, yeah. different motivation. Sure. But people have to realize that 
outside of God, nobody's anybody. We're nobody. God is. It's what God is that we are. And we are only because God is. God says, I am what I am, because we're, but we're nothing except what we can do for God. When we was in Hawaii, I've seen, I've seen God work in, in Hawaiians, in Japanese, in Chinese, Australians. And let's face it, Hawaii is a pretty speck of dust. Yes, and it's sure, the whole it's the whole thing is is that everybody from a different culture comes to God from a different perspective. So you got to bring them to God through what God says, and then they understand. And once they get saved, then their their culture doesn't make any difference because they're just children of God. Doesn't matter where they come from. Yep, and that's important. It kind of reminds me whenever I was whenever I was teaching at OTC, I was teaching on the class, and it was like, man, I get it. I know how to wire stuff. I know how to do all this thing. But when you're sitting there with 23 other people that don't get it the same way you did, right? Exactly. And and, and that's kind of the, the direction I think you're going with that. And it, and the only way that I could ever be able to teach it to all those people was to read in that book, read all the different all the theology in it, or theology, the, all, all the different, you know, just the basis of it, all the different right. things. They explain it to different people. And that's why that's why reading the Word goes so far beyond just us getting That's why we have to be in His Word. That This is the electrical handbook for in that scenario where yeah. we can learn all the different angles because there's somebody that's struggling a different way. There's somebody that's dealing with a different thing. But, but Christ's words, as we read through it, provide us. From a different perspective. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's so important to be in His Word. So we have all the yep. experience, all the different angles so that we can teach, so we can learn, so we can handle. Well, the verse it gives there, it says 2 Timothy 2.21, says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. <laughs> that's a beautiful... I mean, but, but I love that it says, anyone who cleanses himself. So... It's our responsibility to go vertical. It's our responsibility to take it to God. You know, it's not His responsibility for me. It's His responsibility. But that gets us prepared for what the next good work is. It's not effortless effort. It takes focus, discipline, discipline ourselves. I led Julia and Epa Noah to the Lord on the fantail of our ship, and he was Hawaiian Chinese. God just let him. Let us work with him because when he got saved, his wife was already saved, and he got saved. We got him in church, but he he was he was still Hawaiian, and he still had Hawaiian tendencies. So he had to learn God's ways as opposed to Hawaiian ways, which are really not God's ways. And so sure. it took him time to make the turnaround, mm-hmm. yeah. and his son was about two years old then, and now his son is pastoring in New York State. Yeah. I like Paul David Tripp says about the event and the process. The event's justification, the process is sanctification. Yeah. The key word is process. It takes time. It does. Yes. Yeah. Already, but not yet. Yeah. We already got it, but not yet. <laughs> I, I, that, that was a struggle for me for, for a long time. You know, God formed me into a new creation. So much was stripped, mm. and so much was left. Yeah, and it was just frustrating to me because you, you, you know, I didn't have good discipleship at the time. I was like, why isn't all of it gone? Yeah. Yeah. So am I real? You know, the sanctification is what grows us closer to Him. Mm-hmm. It really helps us to to bond that relationship, right? I mean, the greatest relationship I have with my wife, my friends, are, the, are making it through struggles. Yeah, mm-hmm. fighting through it together and coming through on the other side, and I think that's why. I think that's the whole process of sanctification that grows our relationship with God so that we can get through those struggles and love Him and depend on Him and have faith in Him more. Yeah. I remember the times my wife and I had looked for through the house for all the change we could find and see if we could buy a pizza for the night. What's that got to do with sanctification huh. again? Yeah. It's a process. Process. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not taking that change. <laughs> Dude, uh, not only... Whoa, well, yeah, here process I'm here. <laughs> you got to remember, she was born in Africa. Yeah, and you got to remember her parents were born in India in a Portuguese colony. When the Portuguese took it over in the 1500s, they were the descendants of that colony. Is that called the Heinz 57? No, I still want to know more about these Hawaiian Chinese. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. He's got so many cultures, you don't know which ends up sometimes. It's difficult. <laughs> so there you go. I like the question that presents here is, is, are you available for the master? You have to make yourself available. What's that look like? Okay, we'll... Sacrificing your time. So what's going to get in the way of that? Selfishness. Idols. I mean, I really just, we got to call it what it is, idolatry. Yeah. You know, mostly self. Oh, I'm too busy. i got to do this. Uh, oh, I've got to get this done today. So maybe I don't I don't meet with God in the morning. You know, So there he is sitting on the couch, and I sure am just walking past him because i got my own things to do. He's not here. It's important. Yeah. Boy, not being aware of his presence is a big deal. Yeah. You said there he is waiting on you. Yeah. You decide you got to go. you got more important things for the day, which is a big mistake. Well, I mean, to just remind ourselves of that, like Wesley said last night, you know, he, was, he went to a third world country and just having an egg and a little piece of bread, you know, and he was like, he had his Oreos in his backpack, yeah. you know what I mean? And he was just like, I was, was I really grateful? <laughs> you know what I mean? And he said, this guy was crying out to God. He's so grateful for what he had, you know what I mean? And I, whew, that hit me pretty hard. Sure. Like, I mean, we've got, sure. we've got much. Oh, yeah. I mean, the poorest guy in Springfield has much. That's no, a lot. We look at, at, necessities as like running water plumbing like i can't running hot water right oh, you don't want that cold water right. then we complain running just, <laughs> just I, plumbing. I, I, I can go back and remember when i had to go to carry two doors down from my grandma's well and carry a bucket over there and it's different it's easier just to turn on a faucet. Sure. Yeah. That's crazy talk. It's yeah, easier to go and get water out of the well. We look at like being poor. Is, <laughs> poor in America, you still have plumbing and roof over your head. You know, but really I, I looked poor it up a while back. Is you don't have any American kind of stuff. Like that's, the that's, top a, that's not a necessity. People yeah. Yeah. A lot of people right. have yeah. nothing. I heard you talking about that last night with the average. You know, you, you point about idols, you know, whenever you think, whenever I think back and whenever I read about how every time Israel left for other idols, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what was the purpose in serving those idols? To benefit themselves. Because that idol offered a better grain yield. That idol offered a better position. It was, it, all those idols were focused right back onto themselves. And that's exactly... The point that we we're making is that we're we're so busy turning the time to ourselves that we take away from the time with our Lord. And you know, you, you, we talk about how how grateful He was to have those things. Last night it hit me really hard. I was just sitting there thinking about: Do we actually conceptually think about the fact that it's all God's? Yeah. No. We think about what we earned. Yeah. We think about what we deserve. You know, it's it's all God's. Thank you, God, for giving me just this little bit today, or this lot of it today, whatever it may be. But and. and you know, that was one of the struggles I was going through the last couple of weeks whenever I was worried about a job being taken away from me or an opportunity being taken away. And that's all his anyway. It's hard to get that through yeah. through the heart or through the head into the heart though, to, to really bring peace. And you yeah, will you. you'll work for good. What's the good with that? Oh yeah, yeah, good job. You gotta listen to it. Cool. But to go back to I mean, I, I think of the the sad reality of it is is that I mean, even like at times in my life I put my wife as an idol, you know, where I put the, the sexual desire is an idol, or I put the finances as an idol, or I put the biggest house as an idol. You know, all these things can be in the way, and really it's a sad demise. And we would say that, but then how do you see that on a daily? How do you see how spoiled I am in the Spirit of God daily? And I think that's really the call is like waking up with an attitude of gratitude, waking up with the mind that I'm going to worship Him today. If I have another day, I'm going to worship Him. You know? And, and so what was the deal with Aaron? You know, yeah. the people give him some gold, goes in the fire, and it kind of falls out of a calf. You know, I don't know, it just happened. That was a good lie right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what oh, it saying? just come out. Yeah, it just out that way. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, what, but what was going on there? I mean, that was Aaron, right? And, and it's like they were trying to, like, make an image of God. They weren't, like, trying to make another God. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is the God that, that brought you out of Egypt. Add a little bit to it. My friend and I went into a Chinese temple in Hawaii one time. And there's a little little boy standing in this box, sandbox. There was sand in there. Statue standing in a bunch of sand. 
sand. And I said, what is, what is that for? I said, so that's the naughty boy God. I said, people come in there when their boys or kids are naughty and pray to that naughty boy God. What's wrong with the belt? <laughs> 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 I just thought it was so funny because that's a naughty boy God crying out loud what's all the belt <clears throat> so going back to your point on Aaron you know I mean we, we got to find I mean since we're talking about man in this time here but the idle time was the devil's workshop you know what I mean that extra time I mean what were they doing where's, where's Moses at Where's our leader at? Where's he at? Why have he showed up? It's been a really long time and I ain't seen him nowhere. Three time. days. I'm yeah. sure going to so look time. for him on that moment. I guarantee you that. That's what he's doing. <laughs> the nation of Israel is not patient. They're not waiting on the Lord. And I mean, in my life, how many times have I got ahead of God? I've been, I've been throwing my hands up like, where are you at? What? Are you kidding me? Is that why you're always tripping over your feet? I mean, that's what happens, man. You know, we, we get ahead of him or we get behind him and we're not writing his will. You know, we'll be writing his will. Can you picture what, uh, in that same scenario, you've got Israelite, all the Israelites down at the base of the mountain and they've lost concept of their time and they lost concept that, hey, this God's been taking us from point A to point B. And now we're here, we're standing idle for such a long time, let's make our own God. But then on the flip side of that, you got Moses, who is surrounded, inundated. His face is full of God. You know, I mean, his his countenance comes off so much that they had told him to put a veil on him when he comes down the hill. So you got God, or you got Moses, who was just in God's presence nonstop. Forty days didn't seem like forty days to him. He All he knows is he was hanging out with the best person in the entire time. Got away. It did get away there, right? Yeah. And then in the New Testament it says, if the glory of the old covenant that brought death was so glorious that the passing of God's glory made Moses shine so bright that the people couldn't stand the glory that was on him, how much more glorious is the gospel that brings life? Amen. I was listening to uh, audio book Francis Chan, The Forgotten God. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And I think that's where I heard this quote, but I'll probably quote it wrong anyway, so I'll just paraphrase. Like time is an excellent teacher, too bad all of its students are dead. Kills them all. Time teaches really good, but it kills all its students. The whole focus and idea of uh, our time and, and spending it with God is he's real. So Francis Chan said, if you were to say that like this supernatural power came into you to make you an excellent baseball player, the people around you expect to see Just you. You'd be an excellent baseball Great. player, I guess, right? If it was true. So if we're saying God, the creator of the universe, has come into us and made us new creatures, the people around us should expect to see something new. Something different. Something right. Something true. Something flawed. And yet growing. Well, we all have 24 hours in a day. It depends on how we use that 24 hours. Right. And the faster we're traveling near the speed of light, the more time slows down for us. Yes, it does. So what you're saying is we need to be faster. Slow mm -hmm. down. No. It's all about the direction you're traveling and then the speed you're traveling. God is light. No. No, it's not. But yes, it's, I'm looking in that area, but yeah, I'm looking for the... Uh, I love the book Exodus. Something else. I remember when I read Exodus 33 in it. So, oh, let's see. I filled in at least one, right? You got saddest. Did you get demise is the next one? Yeah. And then available <laughs> is number one. I liked it. And some of them, they use like the Roman numerals, and then on other yeah. ones, they'd use like a number, and then other ones, they used a letter. And I'm like, that's the exact way I would do it. You didn't know what I was talking about when I got it. 
Are you available for the master? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. I like that verse. Ephesians 5.16. Redeeming the time. Oh, are the days evil? Are we in evil days? I, I vote yes. I don't know what you guys think. I think we've always been. Yeah, sure. It's a right? All you got to do is look around you. <laughs> yeah, go to Walmart. Yeah, yeah go to Walmart. So that Ephesians, that Ephesians that you're talking about, 15, it says, "Look carefully then how you walk, yeah. not as unwise but as wise, yeah. making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is." The most important part of it. We can't use our time wisely unless we're understanding what the will of the Lord is. Absolutely. The only way we can know the will is. Yeah, I've known people that will. I don't know. Yeah, I gotta go worship God with my Aborigine spirit for a while. Um, okay, but um, I'll let you do that on your own. Well, go, go back up to verse. 14. Hard to find that. Hard to find that scripture. Isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the thing. <laughs> Make sure that we find truth. Go back scripture. up to fourteen on that. Verse. Yeah, you got it. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, "Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Christ will shine on you." Yeah. Mine says, awake, you sleeper, arise, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The danger is when we say we got it, we got it all. In the world, they had a way of saying it. They would say that they had woke up, that they were woke, they were awake, they could see what was happening in the world. If they would admit that they're asleep, they'd have a chance. But they're saying they're woke and they're not. It's one thing to say this, woke. It's another thing to truly be awake. Because if we're awake and aware and paying attention to what's happened, we realize that God is true. He is real. There is a creator of the universe. And that creator sent his son down to die for our sin. And because we are imperfect, we can have righteousness through his blood. And by coming to him as a sinner, coming to him as someone that is blind, coming to him as someone that is deaf, coming to him as someone that needs his righteousness, we receive righteousness. We come to Him with a need. If we go and say we don't have a need, we're not going to receive Him. If we say we don't need God, we're not going to get Him. <laughs> but it was a free gift of salvation that's available for us. His blood will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we think we're clean, we're not. If we think we're good in what we're doing and we're okay and everything's alright, we're not. And if they could have admitted that they were blind, if they could admit that they weren't seeing the reality of God, they would have had a chance. And in this world today, it is a time for people to call out to God and say, man, I missed it. I thought I was awake, but I wasn't. I thought I was seeing the truth, but I was living in a dream. And people need to wake up to the reality of God and the truth of His Word. Awake. Awake, awake, arise. You know, awake. awake. Too many sleeping people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> why? Because time, I mean, if you look at people's time, that's one of the first things you go to, like if you're in a counseling session, is, hey, what do you do with your time? And then it's, what do you do with your money? What do you do with your time? You know, because time's valuable. You can't get any more of it. Once this second's gone, you can't, I mean, you can't we're not guaranteed, we're not guaranteed, we can't get it back, but we're not guaranteed the next one. Yeah. You know, so time's valuable, and when you spend time with people, it should be valuable. You know, that's what we should look at it, man. I'm, I'm, thank you for your time. You know, but we need to awake because why we're sleeping spiritually, and arise why because we're be becoming dead spiritually. Our appetites are becoming dead, but Christ will give you light. That's the only thing that's gonna give us light today. It's the only thing that's gonna give us hope today. I'd say it's more even that. We were dead, and then we found life. And so now, as we live more with the life, um, eat of his body, drink of his blood, consume God, be part of his body, however you want to word it, um, the stronger that becomes, and then the more that flesh is flesh. Find the strengths and weaknesses. You know, put up those walls you need to protect you. Whatever it is, you got something you need to protect in a computer program, then you put up firewalls or blockades.
gains from a tax because there's individuals that would. But when we let our, when we're living sinful or we're walking cl- even close to it, like think about Lot, you know, uh, he's, verse 15 there says, see, that, uh, see then that you walk circumspectly. What's yeah. that mean? What's a good example of walking circumspectly? I already said that. Yeah. Did you ever seen a cat walk around? Oh, yeah. yeah. A cat walks circumspectly. I mean, they do. They're like, they hear a noise. They see it. Paws go up. You know, I'm not a cat fan, but uh, we kind of see an example there of how they're walking. Right? Why do they walk that way? It's protection. It's, they're protected from the enemy. Foolish if we don't walk that way. That's what it's saying there. If we don't walk circumspectly. Because a lot of times we just go, eh, I'm good today. Well, Mike's not good today. <laughs> I mean, I need the armor on me. I need to be walking circumspectly, not as a fool. Yeah, that's why I had that end at the beginning where I was like, yeah, Mike, just, we don't have enough time. That's it, man. You don't have enough time for me. I could go all the way along. Just in case we went down that road. Next section is talking about slow down and slow down, right? Oh, man. That's where I was trying to get Jason to read this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I read that. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Oh, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you walk off with, yeah, right? Yeah, it's good. Slow down. Sit down. Oh. For me, it's, what's the next task? You know, I've got an extra minute, I'll squeeze something in. That took up two minutes, now I'm behind on the next one. But I can still keep going. And all of a sudden, my whole day's gone. And I never did intently or, or uh, intentionally yeah. focus on the things that, that were most important. I have a daily journal that I, I block my time, you know, to help. Because sometimes I'll get to circling, you know. Things will happen, it's like, I got I to gotta go back to that and be like, ABC stuff, like, because I'm sort of lose time here. Yeah. Helps keep me on. Jack of all trades, master of none. Oh, that's nice. Right. Chump of all trades, master. Who of told you? <laughs> Who told you about me? Yeah, that's, that's, what but that's the best thing about like that little devotional. It's not, you know, it's that much. It's not that much. But if you're if you're disciplined, then every morning you just started there. It starts you thought process. Do it every day. Yeah. Have to. And and even though it's a it's a two and a half minute read. It starts a thought process that goes on for 30 minutes, for 40 minutes, a lot for the rest of the day. your heart in that little bit of time. And that I was always bad about, well, I'll, in 30 minutes I'll get to that. Well, I'll just do it tonight. Yeah. Next day's up. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not blocking out that time. Here's the good news. You can make a choice. You can decide what you do. You can decide what you focus on. You can even decide what you do at any given moment. Here's the bad news. You've always had a choice. So, you know, yeah. fess up. You haven't always made the best choice. <laughs> But guess what? That's why we're, we're in new trouble. We're creatures now. We can make the right choice. We get into trouble because we don't make the best choice. Yes. Yeah, because we don't consider God in that choice. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really hard to be thinking about God while you're you know, doing something against Him. At the same time, unless you're just angry with Him and trying to, you know, people do that sometimes. Think you can damage God by damaging yourself. It's really. And when I talk about time being a precious gift, every second, every minute, every day. Use it wisely. You cannot uh, pay the cost of losing time, killing time. I always thought what would be a good idea is, you know, the way that you can get carbon offsets for, you know, carbon emissions, we should have time offsets. So people that normally kill time or waste time or lose time, we can collect all that time and then we can sell it to people that are running out of time. (laughs) I'd buy it. Yeah. Uh, I sold nothing once on eBay, but the guy never paid me. Uh, this one has slow down, and then I put slim donuts, but I think that was supposed to be down as well. Page 12. Slim donuts? Yeah, I put slim donuts. Is that what do you Damn. Slow down. Yeah, slow down, slim down. Slim down. Sit down. I think that had to do with clutter in our lives, although slimming can help too for some. Sit. Down. Down? I put... I put duck, duck, goose. Okay. Because I was thinking when I was a kid, they'd have to play that game where you sit down and then one person will walk around and go duck, 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 duck. And then when you said goose, then that person would have to run and catch you so you'd run around and go get his seat. Oh my gosh, Dennis. I know. Let's get to word going here. Michael's not even I'm a living sitting there just waiting for that goose to You know, I'm like that cat. <laughs> Squirrel! Yeah, you want to talk about circumspectly. So I was thinking, sir, I can imagine playing with you. Yeah. I did be on the ground bleeding, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sir William. Yes. I was thinking about, you know, they're reading in, what was it, 14, about the light shining, and I was thinking about you making an entrance and spotlights on you, and you're coming out, and it's like, here we are. Well, you know, if it was the same light of God, that would be amazing good. Yeah. And sometimes that spotlight goes to our head, too. Yeah. Uh, I think it's our talent, or our ability, or yeah. whatever. And really, it's what we were given. It's a gift. He made us. Yeah. He made us for what? As you know, as, whether whether a, whether we're a shiny vase with flowers or a chamber pot, God made us for however we're to be used in the praise yeah. and the glory. And we need we need the shiny people and we need the chamber pot people. Yep. Praise God for the chamber. Yeah, pot all, all of the all of the aspects in between. Yep. Because we're here together for a purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just reading something here recently. As Paul Day Tripp uh, talking about how this pastor was going on about God blessing him, somebody was pointing some things out to him, and he's like, God wouldn't be blessing me this way, you know, if I was being wrong. Like we can get in that deceive, we can deceive ourselves. Like, but God's going to get glory no matter what. Like, point to Him and not ourselves. But I thought that was really good because, like, I'm just like, you know, learning the balance of things. And you got to be careful. I mean, you got to humble your heart and pray a lot. Yeah. You know, like you have to. Okay, so you're saying three was sit down and not duck duck. Correct. Okay, number four was look around. So that's all over the place. Okay. Head on a swivel. Is that how you say it? How did you say it? Mm-hmm. William, how do you say it? He says, got your six. Yes. Got your six. So, like, looking around, being alert, it's more than just head on a swivel, but it's also understanding who is where, what they're doing, are they walking where they're supposed to walk, are they, are they carrying out their responsibilities, because if they are, then as we work as a team together, we know, even if we don't see them for a little while, or whatever, they're what they're supposed to be doing. you got to learn to look at others, that's the hardest part about anything in life, even in marriage, you know, is looking at my spouse that way, wanting to serve them with that kind of attitude. Wash your feet. Yeah, that's it. It's that. That's that's the example. Yeah, that'd be great. Jesus, I thought about that every day like that. Yeah. Knowing you came from God, knowing you're returning to God, knowing you know, <laughs> he knew. He got up, disrobed, grabbed the basin, and washed the disciples' feet. There you go. That's it right there. If you haven't done that, you should give that a try. That is completely humbling, especially if you're not expecting it. It gets even better. Oh, did you ever have a time, too, like after a mission or something, where you have a teammate that's got some injury and you're taking care of that injury? I mean, that's the same picture of washing feet. You're, you're taking care of some of that damage and stuff. Knowing it's going to be okay, but you got to take care of it. I remember uh, going to a ministry that was, that was one of the things they started with was a foot washing. And as an attendee, you had your feet washed. And I remember how much internally I despised that. Oh, yeah. I was like, I do not want you touching my feet. And I, I, I remember how how much that broke me down, yeah. even having my feet washed. I don't know why, but, man, it broke my pride. It does. Man, man it, it really opened my eyes to, I mean, just that moment. It was like, wow, you're pathetic, dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And all before that, it was, man, I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> so it works, it, works, it works both ways. It takes down, I mean, it takes down walls. Yeah, yeah that's true. And actually, <laughs> you see that with Peter, his reaction. Yeah. Don't, don't touch my, oh, watch my whole body. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, idiot. Don't touch my Come on. <laughs> but that is, it is, it is humbling both, both positions. It was a little more humbling for me. I had an ankle bracelet on at the time. <laughs> no, man, like, we're in. I'm like, what? I'm like, I got this monster ankle bracelet. I'm like, oh man, they're gonna take my socks off and wear my feet. I got an ankle bracelet on. They got to watch, watch your feet. Watch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to watch your feet. We go. Well, we clearly know what we need to be praying about. Oh yeah. Like, how can I? Pr- oh my. <laughs> they'll they'll yeah. come and get me if you take that off. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Play it up, man. Go. Yeah. Last time someone tried this, again, they got electrocuted real bad. Yeah. Like, well, well, before you get down here, buddy. I remember yeah, looking at my buddy. Like, Bro, I got an ankle bracelet on. And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> that's the best time, man. Yeah. Uh, that's humbling right there. Man. Last yeah. time someone washed my feet, they got shocked. So be careful. If I was planned, plan in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the uh, rest in the relationships. I think that's a big, big one that a lot of times us dudes get into is not resting. <laughs> not planning rest. I remember I tried to re- rest once and Michael wouldn't let me. I'd driven, I'd worked all day, drove, went to stop at a revival, then went up to Wisconsin to another event. And I had like 15 minutes laid out, and Michael's like, oh, here, get comfortable in the chair. Oh, here's a little pillow for your neck. Oh, here, here, put these little eye things on. It's like, dude, I only got 15 minutes, just leave me alone, Michael, please. That's my brother for me. So I didn't get it. He's trying to make right. me comfortable. And sometimes that's what we do, right? We, we, we spend too much time trying to get comfortable with stuff, and then we don't remember to rest. <laughs> I got everything I need to rest. <laughs> then why aren't you resting? I don't know. I guess I need something else. <laughs> uh, there, that, that that next verse there, that Second Timothy uh, two twenty one, it says, "If a man therefore purge himself." From these he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Yeah, What's he good. purging? That's good. Well, what's it mean to purge? Well, to purge is to purify, actually. So you're cleansing yourself of particles that you don't that don't belong to you or don't belong to that material. But the image of grossing, you know. If I'm if I'm taking a piece of steel, if I want to make it as pure as possible to where I have the strongest amount of steel, then I'm heating that metal up until all the impurities come to the top and then I draw that off, I take it off and then I can pour that substance into a form and you don't want to get it too hot too fast, you don't want to like set the metal on fire or anything what would be your top two or three things you think that would be a way of purging ourselves I think the the first thing is self-examination you got to find the impurities first and too many times we walk around not seeing the impurities we, we walk around just seeing the... Here's where I'm going to you said we don't see him like your brother calling you out, accountability. Well, so, but I mean, go back to his point. Psalms 138 or 9, I can't remember, David says, search me and try That's me. 139. Yeah, 139. So, but he says that in the first verse, and then he yeah, says it in the last verse, you know, when we went over that. Why does he do that? Because he's continually, search me, try me, Lord, search me. Is there anything impure? I mean, gold, the gold's not valuable when you find the nugget with all the junk in it. It's valuable yet. It's valuable when you take to the goldsmith and he heats up, skims the dross off. So it's the our value. But if you have any that's impure and you don't want it, I'll yeah. take it. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean, not a problem. Many, I mean, how many people I'll, died searching for that hand. nugget? You know what I mean? They searched for that nugget, died for it. You know? I mean, that's the the, the point here is our ability. Like, we're not even using ten percent of our abilities. Most the average person uses ten percent of his knowledge. That's just humbling right there. You know what I mean? And, and so if we took the knowledge that we know and we applied it today, it becomes wisdom. Let's say we apply it, it becomes wisdom. What would that look like? I mean, it would look like us getting rid of the impurities because we got too much junk in our mind or too much junk all around us or whatever. What you'll find out is that that which is of him, of God, that's true, that's foundation of his word, that is his word, his truth, is stable and secure and everything else is insecure and crumble all around. I like your prayer to go. It's sufficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's. We don't need anything else. Like it is sufficient. Yeah, it's a. When you go searching for impurities, it's a display of humility, and it's not natural. It's not natural. Back to idols. We are our own idols. Yeah. We are the high and we elevated. We got to bring it down. Natural. And that's going to be from. You know, that's, that's something too. I, I, whenever, whenever I'm struggling with with a situation, and all I can see is how right I am, just stop and think, what am I doing wrong? Just try and find it. It's humbling. Yep. Changes your whole. It brings you yep. down a notch. Instead of anger, you're broke. Lord, help me with this. You know. Yep. So I think you have to be. You have to. You have to have purpose whenever you're sitting there trying to figure out your own flaws. And that's 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 how you can get to that cleansing. And you can ask your wife; she'll tell you. Usually, <laughs> help me find that out all the time. I think a lot of times we may ignore it, but we know what is dishonorable within ourselves. You know, I may write it off and say, well, that's not as bad as, say, Adam. Adam's much no worse than I am. And so I might use that to make myself feel better. Right. I use it in the wrong way because I shouldn't be comparing myself to Adam. I should be comparing myself to yeah, God. There you go. And then by doing that, I realize I am, I am a sinful creature. You know, I'm a very ugly uh, person. I think we can find that we are uh, far more dishonorable 
and know yeah. what needs to be purged and what needs to be cleansed out of us. But we have to be pay attention to ourselves. We know we have to, we have to be honest yeah. with ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Compare yourself to Christ. Yeah, and walk. Yeah, that's, that. that's huge. And, like that pride's impossible. It pride's impossible if you'll do that. Truly, like if you will constantly right. do that, there will be no pride. And that'll keep us in. Right. The, that'll keep us in the posture we're yeah. supposed to be in. Yeah. The posture we try to be in. But I mean, because if not, you're walking in shame, guilt, pride. Yeah. You're walking in these things. It's always before you. Yeah. Well, that's you know, you focus on His grace, right? Yeah. You focus on His grace today is sufficient, you know, and and that that comes with a repentant heart. You know, I'm, Lord, I can't do this today. I mean, there's been so many days where I've walked miserable. I mean, it was just total destruction all day long. I'm like, man, why do I hold on to this sin this year or whatever it is? Repent of it. Repent of it. And fill it with the grace of God. Fill it with the promises of the purging process. Think about that today when you're driving around or whatever you're doing. That converts guilt to thankfulness. Absolutely. It's worship. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you are worshiping God, Amen. you can't worship Amen. Him when you've got something in the way of that. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, all right, get, get rid of that. Maybe there's a flawed relationship. Okay, Lord, help me with this relationship. i got to go to that person. Get things right. Whatever. That's what it does for you. It's a beautiful picture of Christ. You think of repentance and worship like, because we were doing this, we're holding on to this, what's around us, and this is like repentance. Yeah. And worship. Yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, how can you still have a burden if you gave your burden to him? It wouldn't make sense. Yeah, the devil's a liar. He's good yeah. at it, too. Yeah, he is. Father of all lies. He can turn the truth into yeah, a lie. Yeah, yeah. All for confusion. Roman numeral number two, which might be number two of one of these other things, is Abel. And I was but not like, you know, Cain killing Abel. I think it's Why not Abel the man? I'm, I'm, <laughs> out, of, I'm out of time for teaching, so <laughs> who wants to pray us out? Will does. I will do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Father God, we, uh, we ask for your humility. We ask for your purity. We are men who need to be, you know, put against the fire and the flame and it extract impurities. So, Father, if we don't have anything in this that doesn't look like you, we ask that uh, today be the day that you you begin to take that, to help us to look more like your son, to help us to be an honorable vessel uh, so that we can do your kingdom work. Father, we, um, we know you can use us in any state, but I just ask that, uh, that you just take us to the next level so that we can be more honorable and more of a useful vessel for you. Father, we love you for this time. We thank you for each man and each family that's represented. And we know that Satan is out there trying to attack these men. And so we just ask that uh, you continually uh, send your angels, send a set uh, protection around them so that uh, when, the, when the devil comes and his uh, minions come, that we can stand in the gap. We wish to be your gap men. We just ask for your change of heart. We ask for your... Um, for forgiveness for our sins and a focus to be more like your son. Father, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.